Hey everyone, and welcome to the third devlog for a game that I've been working on, Frog Island. This video is a continuation of my previous devlog number two, so feel free to check that one out if you haven't already, where I added a shop to the game and introduced a new NPC, the Frog Merchant. Before we get started, if you guys are interested in supporting and staying up to date with the game, check out the Frog Island Steam page. I'll be continuously updating the page with more information as more progress and devlogs are uploaded, so feel free to give the game a wishlist if you're interested and want to grab the game when it's released. Additionally, feel free to join the Frog Island Discord server. We host weekly giveaways for Nitro and Steam games, game nights, and lots of other fun activities. If you're interested in staying updated on my development process on a daily basis, feel free to join the server linked in the description. It's full of super friendly people and you can chat about basically anything and even promote your own creations. And as always, thank you guys so so much for all the support and feedback you left on the previous video. There were so many helpful and kind comments and reading each one was really heartwarming. So, over the past few weeks, I've been working on not one, but two new features that are crucial to the gameplay of Frog Island. The first feature I worked on was a diegetic photography system, meaning that the camera will be able to interact with many different aspects of the island, such as identifying frogs, bugs, objects, and other points of interest. The second feature I worked on was a frog compendium system, which acts as a sort of pokédex to store information for each frog and store photos taken by the camera. These two systems work perfectly hand in hand, which is the main reason why I decided to tackle them simultaneously. I'll be going over how I developed each one, so without wasting any more time, let's begin. Throughout the years, photography has had a huge presence in the world of video games. If you were to look at pretty much any recent AAA game, you'll find that most of them give the player the option to freeze a moment in time and snap a quick pic of the screen to share to yourself or others. While this simple feature is always a great addition to see in video games, it rarely plays a large role in the gameplay itself, rather serving as a small fun feature that, honestly, most people tend to miss entirely. With Frog Island, I wanted to take this photography system to the next level and introduce a diegetic feature to make it interactive and immersive. To begin, I created a camera node which would hold the camera sprite and a texture rect to capture screenshots. I then drew some designs for how I wanted the camera sprite to look like. I went through a few iterations but eventually settled on a simple dark blur with white outlines to make it less obscured and more immersive. I also animated a simple camera snap when taking pictures and added a sort of preview photo that pops up and displays the picture that was just taken. So the way this camera takes pictures is actually pretty straightforward. When the player clicks the screen, the camera crops and captures the viewport texture data of a texture rect size to the borders of the camera. For some strange reason, the resulting texture from the capture is flipped vertically, and so I use image.flipy to flip the texture back to the desired orientation. Finally, I can use image.blitrect to copy the area under the crop zone from the screenshot and append this cropped image to an array. With most of the camera system finished, I began developing the diegetic elements of the camera. I wanted to create a feature that allowed the camera to focus and lock onto a specific frog on the island and determine which frog it is. To achieve this, I attached Area 2Ds to each unique frog and a rectangular Area 2D to the camera. Whenever these areas collide with each other, the collided frog's area gets appended into an array of Area 2Ds. The code then runs in the process function to calculate the distance of all Area 2Ds in the array to the center of the screen, to determine which area is the closest to the center. The closest area then becomes the targeted area, and a tiny target sprite is then tweened to that area's position. Finally, I added two buttons to the camera, an individual mode used to snap pics of a single frog, and a landscape mode used to snap pics of the environment or multiple frogs. These buttons can be toggled on the right side of the camera with ease. The next feature I developed was the frog compendium system. I wanted to have a location that could store information about each frog on the island and photos taken by the camera in a convenient and aesthetically pleasing way. So I decided to design the compendium as an old scrapbook. As pretty as it looked, I quickly realized that animating this book to open and close would be nearly impossible, even with the help of tweens, and the three rings obstructed a lot of the book. I gave the compendium a redesign and made the surface area larger, the pages browner, and removed the rings in the spine of the book. 
so I found the way I animated this book to be pretty amusing. Since I had absolutely no experience with animation, especially given the daunting task of animating a book, I ended up using Genshin Impact's handbook as a reference to help me tween my book. When slowing down Genshin's book animation, I realized that they also took a few shortcuts and didn't fully animate it, but rather extended the left and right sides of the book. This ends up working pretty well since the animation happens so fast it gives off the illusion of a book flip. I eventually got a pretty nice looking animation down and I am pretty happy with how it turned out. To make things more accessible, I decided to separate the compendium into two sections. A frog section to store indexes for each frog, and an album section to store all the photos taken by the camera. Each frog index displays its name, picture, trust level, personality, number of visits, trust progress, description, souvenir, favorite toys, food likes and dislikes, and photos taken, all of which are unique for every single frog. To present the contents of the photo album to the player, I can create a grid container whose size will correspond to the max number of slots in the image array. The elements of the grid, or its children, are individual photo frames implemented as a separate scene. This photo scene will contain a photo frame, an empty texture rect placed in the center to dynamically display the images we have saved in the array, and a small colorful pin. When accessing the album, the code runs a function to update and load the correct photos. First, the code deletes any already existing children from the grid container. Next, the code loops through the size of the image array and does the following. For each image in the array, a texture is created, which is then set to the photo's texture rect. This photo is then loaded and instanced as a child of the grid container, meaning that it will dynamically fit in place. Finally, a random color is generated and assigned to the color of the pin to make each photo stand out. The same logic can be applied to the photo section of each frog in the compendium, but instead of using an array that contains every single photo captured, we can use an array with photos specific to the selected frog. Luckily, I already set this up with the two camera modes. By using the individual mode, players can capture photos of targeted frogs, which will then be appended to their own individual image arrays. Finally, I wanted to add the option to enlarge and delete photos, as I thought the smaller photo frames in the compendium were too small to admire. When clicking on any photo, a larger separate photo frame will animate and pop out, displaying that photo's image and giving the player the option to delete the photo, share to socials, or go back. Deleting a photo becomes trivial, as all I need to do is erase the correct photo from the correct array, and call the same previous function to update and load photos whenever an array is changed. With these two systems finally finished, allow me to give you guys a proper showcase of the photography and compendium system. So yeah, that's about it for this devlog. Overall, I'm really satisfied with how these two features turned out, and I think I'm getting a much better grasp of Godot as well as improving my art skills. I'll definitely come back to all these systems in the future to update them, but for now, my goal is to get the main gameplay elements down first. Unfortunately, I was really busy with final exams in May, and I had to go on a short hiatus, but now that summer is approaching, 
I'll have much more time to focus on Frog Island's development. For the next devlog, I'll finally be developing the main frog system for the game. This includes drawing frogs in their poses, frog pathing and how they visit the island, and interacting with frogs. Anyways, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any thoughts, criticisms, things you liked or disliked that you'd like to mention, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear all your feedback. If you'd like to stay updated on my progress with Frog Island, feel free to subscribe to this channel with notifications or join the official Frog Island Discord server, where development updates are posted daily. Thanks again, and stay tuned for the next devlog coming very soon. For real this time.